Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Hand Corner. We have Crossy starting as the White Zerg. You can check him out at Twitch TV. Crossy, C-R-O-S-S-I-E-E. -E. So that's two S's and two E's. Bottom right hand corner, we have Whip. You can check him out, Whip Smacks. He's going to be the Brown Terran. This is on, once again, on Goodnight. I like being able to cast this match. Created by Crystal Drag. If you have not, go ahead and go to Team Liquid and check out the New Worlds map contest. Looks like that Overlord Scout sneaking to the upper left-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner. We'll see where that scout goes. This is I'm just going to open this up to people. So last match, I don't think I'm going to upload it to YouTube. There was a build order loss between Jayun and Crossy, where Crossy opened 9 pool. If you open up 9 pool versus a 2-gate opener, particularly proxy 2-gate, it's like, you're done, right? And at that stage, I'm like, should I just... My thought on that for a long period of time is like, how do I make that entertaining? Because unless Crossy completely flubs it, which he didn't, it's basically a build order loss for Jayun. So my curiosity is, is like, what do you say at that stage, right? Do you just go into fun commentator trivia about these matches? I don't think I'm going to upload it to YouTube, but I'm curious in the comments for that one. Like, what, what do you think? How, what is the most entertainment there? Should I just start telling anecdotes about uh, random things like... The time Moltrap figured out that Multicam can be bought by the Yard and decided to make himself effectively like a Elven Cloak. Stuff like that. It just feels non sequitur to me. Whatever. Not that everything needs to be cohesive in life, and honestly, it's the weird surprises in life. That Anyway, let's get back to the commentary. Looks like we're seeing a 12 hatch this time in the... Uh, sorry, 11 hatch. No, 12 hatch in the upper hand corner from Crossy. Moving up that drone, I believe, to scout. Typical barracks timing. Crossy is just, as far as a lot of these matches, it seems like a lot of these matches and he's just been dominating. Looks like he is going to go for a spawning pool. He's going ahead and grabbing that geyser. Oh, initially grabbing that geyser. Right about 2.05. Which is very precise timing. Suggests he is going to open up the, what's been standard for Zerg recently, which is that two hatch Mulus play. Going to go ahead and remove that. Interesting placement for the barracks, I got to say. And I'm wondering if this is to throw... Never mind, I just didn't realize. For some reason, I thought the exit was up here. Still an interesting placement because oftentimes you'll see it more as a wall. This is kind of out to an oblique corner, interestingly enough. Anyway, first Marine is out. Drone going ahead and scooting up, trying to harass that SEV. Whip was looking to go ahead and plop his command center down. He's going to be delayed just slightly, though, as that drone pulling back out. That SEV finally scooting up is going to go ahead and see that natural expansion. And responding to Twitch chat, yeah, he straight up made an Elven Cloak. Look up Multicam. So look up Multicam. There's the, and you can buy it by the yard. He made, he took some clasps, some magnetic clasps, and uh, went out and tested it. Actually kind of out in the wilderness. And he actually, for a while, his, his Facebook profile was him, like, more or less standing directly in front of a bush. But you just could not see him because of this thing. It was uh, pretty incredible. So I guess that's what I should have done at the last, the end of last commentary rather than doing it here. We'll continue <laughs> the match as normal. Layer about halfway finished. It looks like Whip does have that scouting information. He's getting that second, or sorry, getting that engineering bay up. And continuing to build off that single barracks. We'll see if he can, here's the thing. I feel like this is where Zerg have, their Mutalist Micro is what's letting them succeed these days in the meta at this level. Speed also upgrading, by the way, in the background here. Layer is up, Spire plopping down. Really, if they can find, and that's the thing, Crossy, he just seems to be able to find holes in Terran defense. Maybe that's why Whip is actually placing this so, so far south, is to allow turrets to be placed in such a way where you can kind of get the double placement where if he places a turret here, it helps kind of protect kind of a wider sphere. Engineering Bay up. He is going for weapons one. Looks like a very similar build uh, to Gypsy against Machine. I'm wondering if this is like current meta. Get that early weapons one and try to fend off the Mutalisks uh, in that way. Spire about halfway finished. So basically rely on heavily, more heavily upgraded Marines in smaller numbers to try to pick off uh, Mutalisks out of the air. Looks like some Zerglings grouping up. For Crossy, that is with the Zergling threat on the front, that is going to pin those Marines back and make it a little bit harder with the smaller numbers in particular, because this is just one barracks pumping out these troops to make that level one weapons happen. 
And so that means there's going to be fewer Marines. And so I kind of like these Zerglings on the front. Looks like there's also that base in that upper left-hand corner. So that means there's going to be a large distance that needs to be traveled. If, and this is such a big map as well. So it's going to be difficult for Whip to really stop that. Whip, I think, recognizing the problem, going ahead and putting a supply depot on his front door. He doesn't have a full front door seal in the midst of this. Three additional barracks being plopped down. So yeah, very similar build. Previous match, the turrets on the way. And six Mutalisks already in production. But here's the thing. With these Zerglings potentially capable of doing that run by, there are some medics with this. But again, just fewer medic marines just out generally. Weapons 1 will be close to finished by the time these mules are coming in, but it's going to be a lot of territory to cover with just a few troops. Just two Marines being left there. There are turrets there towards the main, and this is, again, where I feel like Crossy is golden. He just seems to find pockets to go ahead and engage this. The Mutalists moving out towards the front, and again, they're just going to group up with the Marines, and I'm looking for that split attack situation. L getting a little bit too eager and moving in with two Mutalists, taking a little bit of free damage. Now the five mutalisks grouping up. He has more mutalisks and weapons one engaging. He's also got the hydralisk den in production. So he's thinking about going for a, a longer play. But let's see what he can get done out of the harassment. Finding a pocket to kind of sweep underneath and get underneath. Eating a lot of free damage from a lifetime turret, but still able to get a couple hits off. Getting some additional SCV kills and just happy to take a little bit of turret damage. And still, yeah, poking away. And again, these marines... Looks like now they're starting to move out towards the front. So they're trying. So basically, he wants to get aggressive and draw these Mutalisks back. Is successful in doing so. These Mutalisks going ahead and pulling off that front door. Still no creep colonies being built, potentially. Whip holding up. Level 1 weapon's going to be finishing with range in just a second here. There's the. Ooh, Queen's Nest out in the front. That is bold. Battle drone. Also joining this attack group. This is really risky, honestly. If Whip just attacks, just presses forward and attacks us, he's just relying on Whip to more or less have kind of an empty threat here and have these Marines out here as kind of a containment force to be engaged from the Mutalisks. This is, wow, that's all I can say about that. But yeah, if those Medic Marines actually just press forward into this, no Lurkers. So our Lurker aspect is just finishing. Medic Marines stimming and grouping back up. So... An opportunity potentially missed here. Maybe just trying to hide it. Is that what it was? Because nobody would scan. Nobody would think to scan right there. The Mutalist pushing in with Marines out in the field. One Mutalist being taken out, but able to get a little bit of damage there. Level 1 weapons not quite yet finished. There's, yeah, and those Mutalists softened up quite a bit. But more Mutalists out there to join. This is going to be a big attack force. And Whip, he's got those four bags running. It looks like he is going to be able to get into that double starport production fairly rapidly. But mostly sitting back defensively, <clears throat> which is going ahead and allowing Crossy to get that hive tech up, establish that third gas. And it just feels like, at least with this build, is the way things go. It's just kind of like, okay, we'll go ahead and allow this to proceed into the mid game and play it from there. One thing is, is Crossy has invested fairly heavily in these Mutalists with that level one weapons upgrade and, and in sizable numbers. And once those science vessels are out, they're not going to be completely neutralized, but their effectiveness is going to be very blunted, comparatively. But I feel like Crossy is just happy to go ahead and make that investment to make sure he gets that third up, gets that gas up, and gets that next, that, that tier 3 tech. Peeking in once again, trying to poke at what he can. Lost yet another Mutalisk. And whip a little bit ahead in supply, but again... Comparative to Machine, it feels like this Hive Tech's getting up a lot uh, more rapidly. This is a ramped map, so these lurk just fewer Lurkers are going to be able to defend this upper left-hand corner should that be a need. And this is just a, and the Defiler Mound going down, so essentially Whip is going to go ahead and get to that Defiler Tech, which I think he's looking for. Question is, is can he... It's almost like an inversion. It's like, can he bust out, get some map control, and establish an additional base from that stage on? Dropships, actually. I take it back. I was looking for Science Vessels. The science facility isn't up, so we're seeing double dropship being built. So very, very reminiscent of the previous match. And I'm almost wondering if they saw that match and were like, okay, let's go ahead and play that out and see how it goes. Evolution Chamber being built as well. And the Medic Marines starting to move out for Whip. I actually want to... I can't do the... For whatever reason, the map settings here. I can't see what he scanned or did not scan. I think he's aware of that upper left-hand base. is starting to move out and threaten it. But... 
I'm not sure if I like the dropships in this particular situation, particularly with the Mulisks out, uh, with a lot of them being preserved and also having that level and weapons upgrade. Just feels like that's asking for the, some science vessels to get picked out of the air. Adrenal upgrade on the way for the Zerglings. A big shift and momentum happens there. Crossy also able to plant a couple lurkers on the front, hiding them underneath that Overlord. And, Cro and Whip, in the meantime, is not gone ahead and established his third base. Yeah, see the dropships actually getting picked out of the air. Oof, devastating. Devastating. That was my concern right there. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I say it, but I don't want it to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm glad I, I called that out when I did, though, because it makes me feel super smart. <laughs> so I'm just going to enjoy that moment, that commentator moment. Another mules, two mules getting picked off. Science vessel getting picked off. That is actually huge. And I like what Crossy's doing. He's like, okay, I know the science vessels are out around here. Let me just go expend what's left of these mutalisks to either free up the supply and try to get extra benefit out of them. But now Whip, I feel like, is just in a pretty bad situation. He needs to go ahead and establish an additional base. He needs to do something to Crossy. Because Crossy is very rapidly... He's got all that tech he wants. All the tech he wants. He's been sitting on three gas for a good period of time. You can see all that gas he's got banked. He's starting to move forward with a large, a large amount of medic and marines. Maybe if he can just bust through the front, he can sneak back into this match, but kind of a scary situation in my opinion, especially in the hands of Crossy. Additional hatcheries being plopped down, but Crossy looks like he sent Zerglings to go and engage something coming out towards his third and he, neglecting to keep an eye on his front door, but Whip not dedicating to that attack. Maybe because the Zerglings sneaking through? I'm not sure why. So Whip... I don't know, feels like he's being a little bit indecisive. If he was doing this and going ahead and grabbing an additional base, I would feel better about it. But right now, I think he's just, I think he knows he's behind and isn't quite sure what he wants to accomplish out in the map here. Nine o'clock location, hatchery going up, sending out another group of medic marines. Sorry, just marines in that instance. It looks like he's once again gathering out towards the front, but here's the thing. The clock is ticking, Ultralisk Cavern is up, and soon Ultralisks will be joining the field, especially with that 9 o'clock base plopping down. Some Nidus being pushed across. Another a Spore Colony on top of the Sutton Colony, and there's still these Lurkers here. Mulisks nearby on patrol just looking for more potential dropships just in case, and a Defiler has managed to sneak through somehow. How did he get out here? Deep in enemy territory, and might be actually, maybe even might be able to drop a quick swarm and distract things. Science Vessel out, ooh. Eats a bit of plague, but also plague the Queen's Nest. Not that it's a big factor at this stage of the match, but not something you want to do with Zerg. Trying to get a couple of radiates out and sneak those radiates on the front door. So basically, I think what, yeah, what Whip wanted is, is okay, I'm going to bring my Science Vessels up. I'll go ahead and drop some radiates, but eating that plague is huge, and that makes those mules once again a sizable threat. That Defiler still sneaking across. Looks like it's going to get irradiated. Whip now taking, the, this feels like a very late third, getting that third base. He doesn't have level two weapons. Uh, yet as well. So level 2 weapons just coming online. Is now moving up to this upper left hand corner. A few Zerglings sneaking out. But one one advantage for Whip here is he's got a huge supply lead all of a sudden. Feels like Crossy was so invested in tech he really hasn't dropped a lot of army. Nidus Canal is here to provide some reinforcements. Overlord getting irradiated. Kill that and the Zergling but it's not going to take out a lot else. Swarm sneaking out. And actually dropping some Zerglings on that third base, which would delay it and do some additional damage. So Whip being distracted by some Zergling backstabs. So Crossy with a smaller attack force is just going to rely on tech. There is a Firebat in there to try to help neutralize these Zerglings. Handful of Firebats, some Plague Down as well. But the Ultralisks are starting to take the field. And it looks like that 3 o'clock isn't getting wiped out. Oh, that Ultralis is going to get a bunch of kills because they can just you can just run up and tap these guys now with that plague. Defilers and Ultralisks. Name a better combo. Some Zerglings. Looks like they're going to get cut off. And this is causing Whip to yeah, pull back and try to defend his holdings, which means Crossy is going to be able to continue to go ahead and saturate these additional bases, get that additional gas up. The one advantage here for Whip is this is a big science vessel fleet. It looks like he is catching these Ultralists. Unfortunately, he's raiding the, these Ultralists right as they're top, on top of the Medic Marines. And that turns them into 
radioactive death balls that can actually chew through medic marines a little bit more rapidly. So it's it's nice because you know those ultralists are going to die. And another big plague on all of those science vessels. I'm waiting for these mutalisks to rejoin the fray and maybe get a quick pick off here. Crossy also kind of shelling up here at the 6 o'clock. Maybe he's going to go ahead and grab that base. He's <clears throat> gone ahead and got the 8 barracks, adding his ninth. Ultralisk running up and engaging some Scourge overhead, really getting into that science vessel grouping. Leaving only 4 science vessels overhead and the medic marines just melting to these Ultralisks in the interim. More Zerglings able to get onto that third, and Crossy looks in firm control of this match at this stage. Whip having to lift off that command center. And the irradiated Ultralisks actually doing some damage to the SEVs as they're walking by. Good swarm. Ultralisks starting to sneak back out of it. Now the Mutalisks pushing up and just tapping what's left of that science vessel feat. And then that's got to be GG from Whip. His third is in shatters. His science vessel count is obliterated. Crossy has alt well, he still needs to saturate, but he's got all sorts of bases. He's going ahead and grabbing the natural expansion in the upper left-hand corner. Whip is in survival mode. He's behind in supply. Whip actually also took that, man, also took this bottom left-hand corner, has a Nidus Canal there. And is starting to, this is kind of the stage where he can just start macroing up. I like that he has kind of a lurker in the background, just in case there are dropships or something else along these lines. So it looks like he's moving up with these science vessels. This might be like a last hurrah situation. Some Marines engaging midfield. Science Vessels looking to irradiate something. Maybe he can get an eraser. Radiating that Ultralisk. Needs to be very careful because he just does not have... I guess he's got to play risky though. Because he just doesn't have a lot of science. He just doesn't have a lot to work with here. Some Zorglings trying to sneak up to the 6 o'clock. Looks like that is going to get pushed back. One nice thing for Whip is he does have that level 2 weapons. Level 2 armor and level 3 weapons will be there momentarily. But, and he's... Continuing to feel, and this is just such a large map, he's continuing to field, field these armies out. And Crossy just seems to be able to sneak. I don't know how he's doing it. He just seems to be able to thread these armies right underneath, or right by, these troops. Looks like upper left-hand corner might be at risk. But while that's happening, 6 o'clock base is going to get wiped out. And Crossy might just go ahead and sack what's to the upper left and go for a counterattack. Maybe at that mineral only. Looks like there are troops there waiting for him. Whip diving in. There's all sorts of science vessels overhead. Those lurkers just chewing through the medic marines there. Additional radiates plopping down. I think Whip still has enough to go ahead and press through this, but reinforcements are pushing through that Nidus Canal. Ultralist right there getting irradiated. Engaging on top of those medic marines, killing Zerglings along the way. And you can just see it. Yeah, you can just hug them and kill them with that irradiate. Disadvantage there. It looks like Whip... Continuing to try to fend off some attacks. There are swarms, and this is very close to his natural expansion. Crossy just... These Ultralisks are feasting. Just eating Marines left and right. This is like a buffet dinner. The rest of that Medic Marine Force getting obliterated by trailing Zerglings. And those Zerglings are now rejoining that fray at Whip's third base. Looks like they are going to get cleaned up there, but things are looking bad for Whip. This is six base... Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six base Zerg versus what will soon be one base Terran. As the natural, actually, yeah, just one base Terran because the natural expansion and the main are starting to get mined out. More Scourge taking out two more science vessels overhead and Crossy is up 30 supply. Not where you want to be as a Terran. More Scourge. I think that's actually enough Scourge to just fly overhead. It looks like Ultralisks are also going to keep those Medic Marines busy underneath and whip continues to show why he is such a strong player in this region. Devastating everything. Good swarm right there. There's no fire bats to even, even if there were fire bats, these ultralisks are extremely beefy. Level 4 carapace, level 2 weapons. The command center being having to be lifted. That was Whip's one mining base. Another science vessel picked off overhead. And the ultralisk is going to be cleaned up, cleaned up but Crossy would basically have to drop... His keyboard would have to break for him to lose this match, in my opinion, at this stage of things. 12 o'clock base being established by him. He's going up to seven bases. I don't even... Here's the thing. He's At this stage, it's like maybe he just has... 
might need to hold back on the amount of drones he has because he's got too many bases to even saturate at this stage, right? Continuing to pour out troops. Good plague. Not left-hand corner. There are some fire bats here, but they're not going to last very long with these ultralisks. And once again, this command center, yeah, in the air. There's GG from Whip. Oof. So that, like, if... This is a great game to emulate, I would say, for Zerg players. To look at what Whip did, look what Crossy, look what, what Crossy did, because Crossy executed really well top to bottom. And uh, just really controlled that match. And that he's just been dominant in these NA team battles. It's been fun to watch him. It's really, it's like... Maybe I should uh, rename this to, like, Crossy Crushing the Competition sort of thing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Gonna move on to another match. Thanks for listening.